Hello and welcome to Reason and Truth Ministries. This is where we, we communicate truth. My name is Rabbi Lewis and you can find us on YouTube and also on Facebook and uh, the Like Networks. Um, when I say Like Network, it's not a network program, but on Like viewing devices. Um, this week we want to talk about Jonah. You guys know him as Jonah. And how does Jonah relate to us in this 21st century? And what is the real purpose behind Jonah, Jonah and this story about what is so taught as some um, fictitious imagery and account in in history in that it didn't really happen. It's some, some kind of fictitious story with a big fish and or uh, um, and um, uh, a fish swallowing a man and this man is living. So now, how are we to relate with this story? Is this story true? Is it, is it consistent with what facts are and how time evolved and can we prove the credibility of this story? Now, if you all have your scriptures, you can uh, turn to Jonah and uh, which is found in your apologetics Bible 1341. 1341. And um, it was not. Well, just tell me to recap, right? Or oh, that wasn't. Um, no, uh, somebody just told me to recap something, but it wasn't. It was. It, uh, it wasn't on, it wasn't programming, okay? The last time that we were here. So, so what we are literally doing, we are now looking into what the story of Jonah is all about. And if you found it, Jonah, the book of Jonah, and what it says, it says, the word of the Lord came to Jonah, son of Amati, right? And how it is rendered from the stones, um, Torah, how it is rendered, it is rendered, Yahye, Deva, Yahweh, El, Yona, Ben Amiti, La, Amor. And what that is literally saying, and the word of Hashem came to Jonah, son of Amity, saying, Kum, Kum, rise up, Lakaf, El Ni Yona, rise up, rise up, Yona, and go. Ha e eri ha godala godala to the great city vakora vakora and called elahit against ki eleta ra eta Etam la penny and call out the wicked that have ascended before me or that has come before my face. You hear the word la penne, penne, panim or pani, right? So, and but how would this translate? We always remember I told you all Hebrew is a functional language and is a language that has to do with what, what we say interaction relationship is verbs is like is an action oriented language so now in this opening passage of the of Jonah it says vaiha deva yahweh and the word of yahweh el yam yona ben emet ben emet Emeti, Ben Emeti, 
M-A-T, what that song say? What that song's like? Ah, that is right. And you see it right here. Ben M-A-T. And it is, uh, this is Son of Truth. Right? You see, this is two nouns. And once you have two nouns in Hebrew, structured one beside each other, off is implied. Off is implied because the son off. So Ben, because in, in the language is like off or, or is or a, like a, it has no word for a. It's implied based upon when it's standalone. When it's conjugated, it doesn't have the a. It takes on the conjugation of what you are combining. It's like conjugating verbs and nouns and what have you to form sentence. So now, when Ben Emmet, Yona, and Yona, what does Yona mean? What I said again, it means? Dove. So now we've seen something here with the book of Jonah. So now every time we hear about the story about Jonah in the distant past, what we always thought it was, we always thought it was about a fish and about this man who got swallowed by the fish and, and this person who was so reluctant to go and listen to God. And if you read going down throughout, and it's a very short chapter, um, book, four chapters, is a very short um, chapter. Now, who was who was Jonah per se? Who was Jonah? Who was he? He we know that he was the son of. He we know that he was the son of. Mat. Yeah. Right, that's the man. However, what tribe he came from? So now there are a lot of debates in reference to what tribe. Jonah came from. Some say he came from the tribe of Asher, and some say Zebulon. Zeb, Zeb, um, Zerubbabel, right? Zerubbabel, right? I those two um, family structure. And what Jonah represent here for us is a person who have been called out by Hashem to carry out a message. And we know a prophet is one who speaks on behalf of on behalf of Yahweh. So now we seen we are seeing that Jonah is speaking on behalf of Yahweh. But who is Jonah going to? Jonah now is going to a great city. Go down to where? Nineveh, right? And Nineveh is known at that particular point in of the day to be a city like New York City, where you have a panoply of ideas. The zeitgeist of the atmosphere is in relation to different philosophy, relativism, and anything that may contribute to another form of thought or idea that now could take you another on another path. However, we know that doctrine speaks about that which constitute an idea and a and a uh, uh, um, an alignment or a structure of ideas to identify a thing in which you're communicating about or what you're speaking about. Without doctrine, we can't have what conversation. Without doctrine, we can't speak about anything. And you know, to date, we have in our culture where every person is saying, we are not hung up on doctrine. And when they use the word doctrine, they are referring to men like Martin Luther, um, um, uh, John Calvin, and these guys who came up and, or, who, or who extrapolated out of scripture certain ideas that constitute or that has its relation to who? Yodhe Wave, Yeshua Mashiach, and the Ruach HaKodesh, and the whole body of information, it, it encapsulates this whole um, book. 
So you can't take a part out without the whole. No, you can't have the whole apart from the subsection. You need the subsection with the whole and you need the whole with the subsection so that you don't have any pretext or misinterpretation of what the text is communication concerning your here wife here concerning adam concerning earth and concerning eternality those basic primary function of all our ideas where we came from why we here and where we going those three basic um, um principle what questions that we ask so now we find jonah this story just pop up in israel at that particular point in time um, last week, um, well, forget last week. Um, remember what I was talking uh, the last time? I said it was around 793 and 753 BC, right? So that before the common era, before, before the fullness of time when Yeshua would have put in his appearance. So we're looking at 793 and 730. 53. So now we're seeing there, it's a little while before Plato and Aristotle and these guys, right? So it's right up there on the cuffs of these people now coming into an awareness because now they were writing and they were penning in the West. But they were already doing that in the East. They had all this information. So now what we find happening is that... Um, Nineveh is a city like New York where people worshiping whomever they want. People were marrying and giving in marriage. People had no sense of what? Identity. However, there was what you call 